नमस्कार दिस इज देवी कर्नाडिक फ्रॉम शिक्षांग एंड एजुकेशन इनिशिएटिव एंड कंटिन्यूइंग आर डिस्कशन ऑन हाउ डू वी लर्न एंड देर फॉर वट काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रेटजीज वुड बी इफेक्टिव इन टीचिंग वी आर टॉकिंग टूडे अबाउट टू वेज इन विच आर ब्रेन स्टोर एंड ऑर्गेनाइज मेमरी we have known this as long term memory and we've also sometimes called something as short term memory but i'm introducing this word working memory and that is what this episode is going to be talking about so let's begin by understanding how does learning happen in the brain so there is a learning environment which is in the world outside right now this video is the learning environment and the important thing is that we need to pay attention if we want to learn then we need to be paying attention and we will pay attention only if we are interested in whatever is coming to us now what happens is that from the outside environment which is the world or the video or anything else that you're engaging with a book perhaps first if you're paying attention the information or the stimulus comes into what is known as a working memory this is just behind our forehead it's the site of awareness thinking and all the manipulation of information that we already have but we have something known as a long term memory at the back behind in the hippocampus this long term memory it's storehouse of information of everything that we have learned throughout life all our conceptual understanding our procedural knowledge our skills our words vocabulary our experiences of life everything is in the long term memory so what happens when some new information is coming to us from the world from outside we pull out something from the long term memory first like we do in activating prior knowledge and this old information and the new information plays around in the working memory actually and if good learning happens if we teach well if we give good real life examples then it is sent back into the long term memory to be stored and recalled forever now here's a catch there's also something known as forgetting right we can forget information both from the long term memory as well as from the working memory from the working memory usually it drops down because if there is an overcrowding of information there which also brings me to tell you is that to share that the working memory has limited capacity and that's why if it's overcrowded the lot of memorization that our students do information will fall off and the long term memory which has infinite capacity we might forget that which we are rarely using or pulling out from our long term memory let's understand this one again once again with some images from some the outside world if we are paying attention the stimulus comes to our working memory we play around with it but before that we pull out something from the long term memory like activating prior knowledge bring it to the forefront play around with the new information if good learning takes place if the class is good it is sent back as permanent information and learning into the long term memory we'd like to think about the working memory as the cpu the processing unit of the computer the ram which has a limited capacity and the long term memory as rom which is read only memory which has infinite capacity so all the learning actually needs to sent be sent back into the long term memory so that there is lifetime retrieval let's understand this a little bit more here are a couple examples to explain what do we mean by long term memory and how do we use it i mean we know how we use it because there's infinite stuff stored there and we pull it out at will whenever we want to so whenever we recall somebody's name or email address or phone number whenever we recognize something isn't that the teacher who failed me for example or isn't that the teacher who gave me a rose baby procedural like we never forget swimming we never forget riding a bicycle possibly many other school skills that we have learned which are in our long term memory and we bring them out when we require them musical so if there's a song which is going on and you are trying to catch the tune so you will probably say how does it go laga chuneri me daag so if you try to remember a tune that is musical which is there in your long term memory linguistic a word that we know somebody says which is the word which started starts with dip which means a degree or a certification and you say oh, it's diploma it's in the long term memory episodic This is what happened when the police showed up. Some episode, remember, semantic. 
a whale is a mammal, an ostrich is a bird and so on. All kinds of memories, all kinds of procedures and conceptual understanding that we have in our long-term memory, which we use whenever we need it. So what is long-term memory once again? There is information there, which we have actually collected throughout our life. So we're not born with it. We're not born with the information which is stored in our long-term memory. We learn about it through our education, through experiences of life. We have rehearsed it, we have elaborated it, we have practiced it, and it is so permanent that it is right there. At any time we need it, we call it out, unless it's been forgotten with no usage. So the storage capacity, once again, of the long-term memory is infinite. There is no limit. This is also known, or we can remember it, the analogy of a ROM, read-only memory. But then what is working memory? Working memory and not calling it short-term memory. Short-term memory is something entirely different, not much used for learning. Short-term memory is when you remember a few things for a short time. A very good example of that is the OTP that we get these days for anything that we want to order. You remember it only for a short while and then you forget it. Or the, uh, the OTP you have for a, for a cab, an Ola or an Uber, you only remember it till you get into the cab and then you forget it. That's what the short-term memory is for. Working memory though, we use it every time that we read or we write or we listen. That means we are using our faculty of thinking and our faculty of playing around with information which is in the working memory. The good news is we are born with it. All of us are born with a capacity of thinking and, and information which we can play around with. Rational thinking, logical thinking and all of that will be developed through education. But think we can if the so-called normal intelligence. So whenever we are attempting a comprehension passage, we are thinking. Whenever we are trying to follow a conversation, we are trying to make sense of what's going on. It's all happening in the working memory. Solving a problem, making a decision, organizing a task, doing our mental mathematics, solving some puzzles, whether it is, you know, a puzzle which is a Lego or something else that we are doing. If it's a crossword, we might be pulling it out from the long-term memory. When we are following various multi-step directions, so working memory, it's a cognitive system with a limited capacity. This also therefore tells us that some children cannot remember because their working memory is overcrowded because they haven't been able to send most of the stuff into their long-term memory. It's jammed there. The CPU is jammed. So think of you as think of it as a RAM or CPU. So what's what's the learning there? The learning is that if you want that to be free, we need not be cramming it. Teach such that maximum stuff goes into the long-term memory. Therefore, what are the strategies for strengthening the working memory? Just a few here. There's an idea of chunking, which means you break up content into easy bits because there's not much space, so you break it up so it's easier to remember. Whenever it is vocabulary and mathematics and tables and spellings, there must be so much of rehearsal that it actually goes into the long-term memory. Try and practice something called wait time. That means give bits of information, wait, ask them questions, let it go into the long-term memory, free up the working memory. Minimize directions. Some students get confused if you give too many directions at one time. So maybe one thing at a time because it's got limited capacity. That's what we need to remember. Reading must go to a very fluent level so that there is no struggle of decoding the words and the working memory is getting full. So if it is fluent, the words are coming from the long-term memory and the space is empty there in the working memory for more new knowledge. Some teachers like to practice with a timer. So after four to eight minutes, they stop for what is known as a brain break because teachers who understand that the working memory has a limited capacity would be using these practices. Whenever you get your students to draw pictures of whatever they're learning, it helps in the internalization. It helps it go into the long-term memory and the working memory is therefore free. And also all kinds of graphic organizers. Again, you're organizing it through a drawing and so it's easier learning and working memory is free. Now, let's look at what kind of graphic organizers. And there is a module that we have done on graphic organizers. We recommend six of them. And I would direct your attention to that module and do go back there and check it out. And we recommend that if you want to keep the working memory free and send maximum learning to the long-term memory, we must be using graphic organizers and students also should become adept at it. So we recommend the timeline. We also recommend something known as the fish bone diagram or the cause and effect diagram, also known as the Ishikawa diagram. 
any kind of a pyramid for a food chain or Maslow's hierarchy or any pyramids that you need to classify or taxonomy of whatever you're teaching. The Venn diagram, which is of course for similarities and differences. And we also have a few more like the mind map and the flow chart, which you might find on the module that we have just been notifying you about. All right. What are some of the strategies for strengthening the long-term memory also? Because remember, we said that we might also forget things from there. So there's, a, there's an idea or an activity called two things. What happens in that? It's about stop and have students write down two things. Example, what are the two things you learned so far today? So you're sending it back to the, you're making sure it's there in the long-term memory. Then, now and way back. Now, and whatever you learned recently, then learn not too long ago, way back something learned a while ago, try to get them to recall from the long term memory. A brain dump, okay? Ask students to write out everything they remember about a previous class. You might be familiar with most of these strategies, so I, I'm just sort of reinforcing what you already know. A guided conversation. Can you mention one detail in the topic done yesterday or last week which stuck with you the most? etc. So that you are, what are you doing? You're strengthening their long-term memory and making sure that the information has reached the long-term memory with good effective teaching. There's an idea of retrieval mapping where they create concept maps and graphic organizers without looking at a book. So just from memory, they recall information and they draw out the graphic organizers that we were just talking about in the previous slide. Then there are quizzes that students can design. So they come up with a question, right? And that could be asked in a quiz. So again, this is about review and recalling what's there in the long-term memory. Just to sort of bring it all together, we are also saying that be alert to these kind of statements if you hear them in your class. Okay? Now, I'll just open up the statements first and then we will see what is telling you that what's ringing an alarm bell for both long-term memory and working memory. This is too much to remember. I'm on the right track. I give up. I'll use some of the strategies we learn. This is very exciting to solve. I have no idea what's being asked. I just can't get this. Okay, How is this even relevant? Some students might say, oh, my head is hurting. I don't think I was even present in the class. I am trying to understand. I know how that works. Now you will see that on the working memory side, these three are telling you that the working memory is jammed. This is too much to remember. I give up. I just can't get this, which means there is no more space for getting new stimulus and no information. While this shows you that there is a space and it's fluid and thoughts are fluid. Similarly, for the long term memory, I have no idea what's being asked. I don't think I was present in the class is telling you actually that there is something wrong with the long term memory. Okay? Whereas this is telling you that all is well and students can remember. What about the star? Excuses. How is this even relevant? My head is hurting and so on. These are just excuses that our students make. So just three insights for developing memory. Okay. One, activate relevant prior knowledge from the long-term memory when you're teaching something new. Two, ensure that there is free space in the working memory. The CPU must process. And three, teach by connecting everything to real life and send it back to the long-term memory. Just a quick recap. So whenever we are introducing new knowledge, concepts and skills, create an interest first. First thing is attention and interest and show the relevance right at the start. Activate and retrieve knowledge, the old knowledge from the long term memory. Use chunking and other techniques we mentioned for the working memory and make real life connections through effective pedagogy to send everything back into the long term memory. Okay? If you like what we're presenting, do subscribe to our channel. Shikshangan works hard to bring you top class content. This is one of the ways in which our brain learns the working memory and the long term memory. Both are important. Both are useful. As educators, we must know what is responsible for what. Thank you for watching.